Hello there guys, it's Steven here. You're liking this new camera angle that I'm trying. It's interesting, isn't it? I basically thought I'd get my camera on a tripod. I have a nice wide uh, angle with my laptop here. It's normally off screen, I'm hiding it because um, I like to pretend that I know everything in my head, but I write notes down, so I've got it all here. So you can actually see it this time due to the wider angle. Fingers crossed you actually like this, and fingers crossed this video is in focus because I can't quite tell. Fingers crossed it is. Anyway, hi, it's Steven here, the day before the Arsenal game, um, and I'm looking forward to it a lot. It's going to be a very interesting game of football and a very crucial game of football. Also, very quick plug the fact that I'm on True Geordie's kickoff tomorrow, the live stream so get on that channel tomorrow, give me plenty of love in the comments, uh, I'll be on there for like 3 or 4 hours watching the game, talking to Hugh Wizzy uh, True Geordie, um, amongst other people, so that's going to be very interesting looking forward to it. going to London for that, so that's going to be exciting also I want to give a very quick shout out to my latest patron, Will Pickering Will, thank you for your pledge uh, your donation, you're an absolute hero mate uh, if you want to get involved and do the same and help support this channel, patreon.com forward slash esteemed company, there's loads of things like you can get involved in a patron only QA, you can get your name, the credits, and all that kind of stuff, and a shout out, of course, as well. So, Will, thank you very much. But let's get on to tomorrow's game, then, shall we? This is going to be interesting. Um, as I start this video, we're currently sat in third in the table. Yes, Spurs beat Newcastle, so they're currently ahead of us due to games played, really. Um, but it shows how quickly the table could turn. If we win tomorrow and then we win against Everton, and if West Ham get something from Liverpool, we could be top by Wednesday. So, the table could switch around. Yes, we'd have a game in hand, and all that kind of stuff, and it relies on lots of various factors, but it shows you how tight it could be potentially at the top but anyway this is a very important game we have to basically win because uh, Liverpool are following us for once and if you win we're two points behind them and then they go to West Ham knowing that that's going to be a difficult game for them Pellegrini could do us a favour and I hope he does the charming man does do us a huge favour there because that could change the course of the title race if they slip up at West Ham and Stranger things have happened. But looking forward to the Arsenal game. Genuinely, we do quite well against Arsenal. I'm not trying to jinx the team. Don't worry, touch wood and all that kind of stuff. But we have won our last three in a row. And I think Arsenal lost seven of the last visits to the Etihad, which is a hell of a bad record. And largely, they're really bad on the road as well. I think they've lost 11 of the last 19 away games, winning five and drawing three. And they've only kept one clean sheet during that time, a one win at Huddersfield in May 2018. So basically, they lose a lot of games away and they concede a lot of games away as well, which is a um, not a very good record for them, which basically means it's probably set up for them to keep a clean sheet and, and probably win. I hope not. Anyway, but in general, the Omens look quite good for us, uh, and we do tend to play well against an Arsenal team that's kind of inconsistent. On to the team news. Um, it's basically as we were, really. Company is still out, and Mendy is still a doubt. Pep did say that they're taking it one day at a time with Mendy in terms of they're just seeing how he reacts at training. Some days he's training, some days he's not training. Uh, I personally don't think he'll be involved tomorrow, given the squad we've got, given the depth we've got. It seems like too much of a risk. I would like him to be back very soon. Maybe we'll see him next week against Everton or Chelsea, but I just can't really see it happening. Uh, there's also some rumours about Edison being injured, but given the fact that Pep didn't mention in his press conference, you're going to presume that he's largely okay. Uh, and I guess it was just a bit of a precautionary kind of thing. I think it was an injury, a gas or something like that. But he's all right. Edison is a tough son of a gun and he's probably going to be fine for this game. But let's go on to the actual lineup and what I predict here. Well, it's going to be Edison in goal, barring some kind of late change of heart there. I can't see Murich playing. It'll be Edison in goal. Uh, even if Murich did have to come in, I'm sure he wouldn't let himself down. Murich is a very good player after all, but it'll be Edison in goal. Let's be honest. On to the fullbacks is where it gets contentious. Now, Denise Danilo and Walker were roundly and uh, kind of largely slaughtered for different reasons, I guess, after the Newcastle game. The Newcastle game was a very depressing experience, but this one, I still think we'll go for something close to the obvious, really. I mean, I think Kyle Walker will start again. I think Danilo will start again. We could see Delphine left back, but that seems to have been an option that Pep's just kind of moved away from in general at the moment. He's not seeing it as much as we did last season. For whatever reason that would be, I can just see him seeing playing Danilo uh, and Walker again. I would like to see Delph get a go at left back again, but he seems to have lost that confidence for Pep to play that role whether that's fair or not I don't really know but but it's probably not going to happen uh, and it'll probably be Danilo and Walker once again as the fullbacks there on to the centre back pair and it gets a little bit more interesting I thought Laporte didn't play very well the other day I love Laporte as you all know but I thought he had a pretty poor game by his standards giving the ball away loosely in defence making some very sloppy passes which basically doesn't fit him at all but him having two games back to back of that quality is very very unlikely so Pep might look at it that way too but I also wouldn't be surprised if we see Otamendi come back in and um, for me I would like Laporte and Stones to play given the fact there's no company there um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Otamendi comes in and Stones plays alongside him I'm going to say it'll be Otamendi and Stones with Laporte missing out on this game seems a bit weird but I've got a sneaky feeling he may do this for some reason 
No idea why, but whoever it is, they're going to have to be on, obviously, their best behaviour to mark the likes of Aubameyang. In midfield, Finandino didn't have a great game the other day. I would agree on that one as well. But Finandino is still Finandino. In a game against Arsenal, we need his dynamism, his energy, his power, his experience there. And I'm sure he'll be a lot more focused after the Newcastle game. And I suspect he'll be anchoring the midfield there as well. You could say maybe Gundam won't play because he did it one point last season. I think it was when we won 3-0 away and he was very good that day there. But I can still see it being Finandino and it makes a lot of sense, really. Is ahead of Finn and Dio where it gets a little bit more interesting. For me, I think there will be some changes there. I'm going to say I think David Silva will actually drop to the bench. I think we missed Bernardo Silva's running power the other day. We should have had enough given the players he put out. Arguably, some would say it's our strongest team against Newcastle of what's available some would say Bernardo should have been in that and that's also a very fair argument you can struggle to split him but either way it should have been enough and it wasn't I think David Silva may drop to the bench for this one and we could see Bernardo Silva likewise though we could even just see the two Silvers ahead of Fernandinho for me though I can see uh, David Silva dropping to the bench and Bernardo alongside Kevin De Bruyne I think we need the running man there in midfield I think Kevin De Bruyne um, even though he didn't play that well against Newcastle I still think we missed something when he came off the pitch the other day we missed his incisiveness and even when he's playing poorly Kevin De Bruyne still has this ability to pull something out of the hat in terms of a wonderful long ranger or a great cross or a great through ball that's just the kind of player he is he's a percentages player and he takes those risks and often more than not he just kind of results in a goal further ahead of them I think it's fair to say that Sane and Sterling didn't play very well the other night but you've got to look who we're playing against and historically Sane tends to do really well against Arsenal I mean he usually has them on toast so I wouldn't be surprised if he does play this one um, he's normally Bella in there he's obviously injured at the moment but regardless whoever's there I can still see Sane starting this game and having a very good game as well. I think he'll be another who wants to bounce back. And likewise, we could see Mares come in. But for me, I'm just getting Sterling vibes once again. I think basically Pep will use this game as a way to say to him, go out there and actually prove me wrong. You were poor the other day, the whole bunch of you, and this game's really important. I think Sterling will be one of those that will drive us forward. Sterling was fantastic with his energy and his desire against Liverpool. And this is the kind of big game where I can see Sterling really trying to step up. Uh, and I think he will do as well. It's up front where it gets more interesting. I thought Aguero worked really hard against Newcastle. He scored one, probably could have had another without that weird free kick incident. But he didn't play to the level that he did against Liverpool for example and even though he did work hard we want more from him than what he gave against Newcastle now for me I think it might actually be Gabriel Jesus. I've got a feeling he'll go for this young, dynamic front line. Uh, and I think it will be enough. I think Gabriel Jesus probably deserves a start as well, given his recent form, given his recent goals, and given the games we've got coming up as well. I think he's just more suited to this game than most. And I think he'll run Arsenal's defence a little bit ragged. Uh, and Arsenal defence that does concede goals these days. That's my lineup. I want to know what you make of that lineup. Let me know uh, in the thoughts and the comments below and all that kind of stuff. And on to Arsenal. Well, it's Arsenal these days. Um, they're not the, quite the uh, all conquering Arsenal style the season they are a little bit more kind of patchy these days uh, and life's kind of kind of hit home for Emery they're still doing okay largely not too bad the last six they beat Cardiff at home uh they won 2-1 but didn't play that well according to their fans they obviously lost to United 3-1 in the FA Cup and they were largely outclassed in that game they beat Chelsea though a very kind of Dower Chelsea at the moment, but they beat them 2 0, still a decent victory. Then they lost 1 0 to West Ham, beat Blackpool uh, and Fulham 3 0 and 4 1, respectively, in the FA Cup and the Premier League. It's a very mismatched, kind of patchy run of form they're in at the moment. Uh, and basically, uh, the Premier League has really settled into Embry now in terms of it's got under his skin. And Arsenal fans are looking a little bit restless because they've had some uh, bad defeats and also some good victories, but it's looking a lot more complicated than they did at the start of the season. Having said that, they have got the new man, Dennis Suarez, the ex Manchester City player, and I hate these kind of moments. I would not be surprised at all if he plays and gets something here because uh, that's just the way football is and um, I mean we should be able to handle him because to me Dennis Suarez as good a player as he is he's not as good as the ones we've got I put it quite as simple as that uh, he's a very clever player and obviously he'll be looking to make an impression against his former club and the fact that he's a debut against his former club as well it's just one of those games that you think oh I don't like that and obviously as well he knows Emery's style given the fact that he managed him at Sevilla and all that kind of stuff um, Dennis Suarez is a good little player but I don't think it should be the difference between the two teams we'll have to keep a close eye on Aubameyang the fastest ever gunner to reach 25 goals in only 37 games he's a very good signing and he's been good for them and his partnership with Lacazette up front in general is good it creates goals they score goals together they link up pretty well uh, that is something to keep an eye on there I do personally hope they go for two up front because I think that'll create space in midfield for us they'll probably play some kind of diamond formation with Torreira holding and maybe Iwobi will play maybe Suarez maybe Ozil Ozil's been very in and out of the team but maybe they'll go for us a little bit I mean I don't think we'll see all of them play but it'll be interesting and I hope they do go for us because I think that'll create a lot of space we'll probably see Maitland-Niles take up the vacant spot with Bellerin and then the likes of Monreal and Mustafi and Koscielny and I think Koscielny's actually back given the 
rumours that he picked up an injury against United. Uh, and other than that, I think Arsenal will come at us. Uh, they'll have a good spell, as they always tend to. Uh, we've just got to be bold. We've got to assert ourselves in the game. We've got some points to prove, which takes me on to the prediction. Now, given the fact that we were largely very poor against Newcastle, and Pep was very frustrated, and he kept him in the change room for absolutely ages, this game is going to be a very, very interesting signpost of what we can expect uh, from the rest of the season, really. Now, if we turn up and we play at our best, we will categorically win this game. Arsenal are poor away from home. They can see goals, and at home, in general, when we play our best, we score a lot of goals, and we don't concede many. Um, that's a very big if. I'm looking for a very positive reaction here because if we get that, it shows that the players are focused and then we'll go to Everton and maybe Chelsea and get the results there. We could put a lot of pressure on Liverpool if we do this. I think we will win. Um, I'm going to put a very cautious, optimistic 2-0. Um, it's optimistic, but it's not unrealistic at the same time. It's. Uh, I'm very nervous about this game, I'm not going to lie. But I think we should be okay if we play the same way, fingers crossed. Guys, I want to know what you make of uh, this game tomorrow, what you're looking forward to and all that kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you make of this kind of wider angle as well. It's a bit hard to set up, but I quite like it. It looks nice with the viewfinder anyway. Fingers crossed it looks good when you edit it. Let me know your predictions for the game. If you are new to this channel, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget as well, I will be on True George's channel tomorrow for the kickoff live. So uh, tune in from like 4 o'clock onwards and I'll be chatting to Hugh as he uh, loves... Uh, um, James Olcott and True Geordie himself representing Manchester City. Fingers crossed we've got a victory for me to watch along to because it's going to be terrifying if it isn't. Anyway, if you're new, subscribe, like, comment, all that in a bit.